Okay, so this video is going to be uh, about hyperbolas, which are going to be very similar to ellipses in how they, the equations, how those look. So um, in number one, I gave you the equation of the hyperbola right here. And notice it looks almost like an ellipse equation, but an ellipse would have a plus here instead of a minus. Um, and what that minus does is it sort of flips the ellipse inside out in a sense. So, um, and, and in fact, I gave you the graph of that ellipse, right, of the hyperbola right here. So let me write the equation of the hyperbola so we have it on the same screen. So is this minus this over 2 equals 1. And so this, this double kind of curved shape is the hyperbola. Um, and notice it also has asymptotes, which are these dotted lines that form that x there. Um, whoops, forgot the square. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to graph its counterpart, which is with a plus here. So that would be it's a, the elliptical counterpart for the hyperbola, because they, they essentially come in partners. One's minus, one's plus. So if we were to graph this one, um, so part A, we know that the center of the ellipse is going to be uh, what here? 1, negative 3. And we know that the horizontal stretch is going to be 4, and the vertical stretch is going to be 2. OK, so let's plot 1, negative 3, which happens to be the same exact spot as the center of the hyperbola. And then I'm going to go 4 to the right and left. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go 2 up, 1, 2, and 2 down. And here is the ellipse. OK. So um, here's a vertex of the ellipse, which is at, what is that, 5, negative 3. And here's a vertex of the ellipse, which is going to be located at, where's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3, negative 3. Um, and so then that is what we've got so far. OK. Uh, in part B, it says determine the values for A and B for the ellipse. Um, well, A is the longer radius of the ellipse, which is 4, and B is the shorter radius of the ellipse, which is 2. So in this case, A is 4 and B is 2. So this right here is part B. Right, part B. And it turns out if you have the A and B values for this ellipse, then it's got this, the hyperbola has the same A and B values. A equals 4, B equals 2. It's still the horizontal and vertical stretches, whichever one's bigger you call A, whichever one's smaller, you call B. So at least that's nice. And then the center of the, of the hyperbola is the same as the center of its ellipse counterpart, negative 1, 3. So that's all easy enough. OK. So then in part C, it says sketch a rectangle around the ellipse right, so that it passes through the vertices and covertices. So that's going to be this rectangle right here. So that green rectangle right there is what I just sketched. And it says, how are the asymptotes of the hyperbola, so these dotted lines that form that x, related to the rectangle we sketched? Well, in C, the asymptotes of the ellipse, asymptotes, or of the hyperbola, sorry, the hyperbola, uh, they pass through opposite corners of the ellipse rectangle. Right? I'll just kind of put that in quotes here because it's not really a formal term. OK. Because um, if you notice, like one of the asymptotes goes right through this corner here and this corner here. And then the other one does the same deal, but with the other opposite corners of the rectangle. 
Okay, so then the last thing, oh, and let me label the center point here. This was one negative three. Okay, so then the last part is find the equations of the asymptotes and they're lines, so we need to use a linear equation and the hint is use point slope form because this is always gonna be the easiest thing. So um, point slope form, we need the slope and we need a point that the line, that the asymptotes pass through. Well, both asymptotes pass through one negative three. So right here, what I'll do is, you know, this asymptote. Well, we know it's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And we know that one point that it definitely passes through is the center point, one negative three. So I'm gonna plug in one for the x and negative three for the y. And since I'm subtracting the y, it really becomes y plus three equals whatever the slope is, x minus one. So really what we need is the slope. Well, that's where the a and b come in handy, because if you look right here, here's a nice little slope triangle you can use, right, on that dotted asymptote. The rise is two and the run is four. So this slope right here is two over four, which simplifies to one half. And then I can plug that in right there, and I've got the equation of this asymptote. So then let's look at this asymptote. And if I use point slope form again, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, well, this asymptote also passes through the center point, right? So that's the point I'm going to use. Uh, let's see, x minus 1, y minus negative 3, so y plus 3. And then we need this, this dotted line slope, right? this asymptote slope. Well, we have a slope triangle right here as well, right? It's a run of 4 and a rise of negative two, because it's going downwards two units. So that slope right there is gonna be negative two over four, which is gonna be negative one half. So then I just plug that in right here, and now I've got that asymptote. And if you, if you wanted to get it into a different form, you could bring the three over, you know, subtract three, simplify this side if you like y equals mx plus b form instead. But this form is totally fine for tests and whatever else. Okay, uh, let's try the next one. Okay, so the hyperbola in number one, the x term's positive. So let me, here. Uh, actually, I'll shrink this down a little bit. Um, 75%. Okay, so in number one, if we look at this equation right here, I'll, actually, let me just copy it and paste. So copy, paste, right there. So in this one, this equation that we had, the notice that the hyperbola opened up like this, right? And that's when the x term is positive and the y term is negative. So if you switch them, notice the new one. So this goes with that kind of picture. In the new one uh, that's listed right here, these guys get flip-flops. So now the y plus three over two is the positive one and the x minus one over four is the negative term, right? Well, when that happens, all that really does is it switches where you draw your hyperbola. So instead, you're going to draw it this way, where it opens up and down instead of left and right. So the key here is still remembering, okay, the center point, remember now the x's are over here. So the center point is still 1, negative 3. The horizontal stretch is still 4. The vertical stretch is still 2. This is still my A, this is still my B, because that's bigger than this one. So if I plot 1, negative 3 right here, there's my center. And now we don't have to graph the actual ellipse. All I need is the rectangle. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 out this way, 1, 2, 3, 4 out that way, up 2, down 2, and then here is the rectangle right there. And notice it's the same exact rectangle that we had before. Um, if I wanted to draw on my asymptotes, well, here they are. It's the same asymptotes as before. They go right through the corners of that rectangle. Right. But instead of drawing this one that go with the vertices of the ellipse that would be stuck inside that rectangle, 
we're going to draw a different one because it's the y term that's positive now and the x term that's negative. So when the y term is positive, you would draw this one instead, the one that opens up and down. So in that case, the vertices of the hyperbola, this is a vertex of the hyperbola, that's a vertex of the hyperbola, those are actually going to be the co-vertices of its partner ellipse right, right in the middle there. So this one's located, let's see, we went down two units, so that vertex of the hyperbola is going to be 1, negative 5, and this one's going to be 1, negative 1 right there. Okay, and then if you wanted to, you could get rid of, you know, the stuff in the middle if it's annoying you, but it's fine if you leave it there. Okay, let's look at 3. So we're trying to graph this hyperbola. Uh, I'll zoom back in a little bit. Let's go 100%. Okay. So here's the, here's the equation, and we want to arrange it so it's in standard form, which is something squared plus something squared, or sorry, not plus, minus something squared equals 1. Okay, so let's start 4x plus 3 squared minus y minus 2 squared equals 4. Well, we want it to equal 1, so if we divide everything by 4, then we get x plus 3 squared over 1 minus y minus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. And then the idea is that we have everything inside parentheses. So this is the same thing as x plus 3 all over 1 squared minus. And then if we put the 4 inside the parentheses, it would need to become a 2 because we're going to square it. So then let's see here. What can we figure out? We know that the center is going to be negative 3, 2, because the x's, the x's and y's tell us that, essentially. The horizontal stretch is just 1, so it's actually not stretched at all. The vertical stretch is 2. If we needed an a and a b, the horizontal stretch is smaller, so that's the b and this is the a. Um, and the x term is the positive one, and the y term is negative, so that means that it's going to open out like this, left and right, instead of up and down. Okay, so that's all we need to graph it. So let's go ahead and plot. I'll use red for the center. So over negative 3, up 2, there's the center point. Negative 3, 2. And then to get the rectangle, we'll use the stretches. So it's uh, left 1, right 1, and up two and down two. So here's the rectangle. And then we'll sketch the asymptotes. So those go through opposite corners. Right there. And then we need it to open left and right. So that means we're going to choose these two points and then use the asymptotes to kind of guide where this thing should go. So something like this. And then, uh, let's see, what do we need? We have the values for A and B, we have the center point. The vertices of the hyperbola are these points here. So let's see, we had to go one in each direction, so that's gonna be negative two, two, and negative four, two. So that's a vertex and vertex for the hyperbola. Uh, what else do we need? We have the asymptotes, but we need the equations for the asymptotes. Okay, so this asymptote, let's figure out this one. So we'll do y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. We know that the point that it definitely goes through is negative 3, 2. So I'm just going to plug in. It's y minus 2 equals whatever the slope is, x minus negative 3, so x plus 3. And then the slope, well, let's see, we went uh, up 2 and over 1. Whoop. Up 2, over 1. So then this slope is a rise of 2 and a run of 1, so it's just 2. So I'm just going to put the 2 right there. You could do 2 over 1 if you prefer to see that in fraction form. And then this one, the asymptote down here, well, it's a drop of 2 and a run of 1. So this slope is going to be negative 2 over 1. So this equation right here, y minus y1 equals m 
x minus x1. We know it goes through three, negative 3, 2, so there's going to be a plus 3 and a y minus 2. And then the slope was negative 2 over 1, so just negative 2. And there's the equation of that asymptote. Okay, so we'll do one more problem here. Um, and that's one where everything's been multiplied out and you kind of have to get it back in a standard form so you can graph it. So let me rewrite it down here. Negative 4x squared minus 8x plus 9y squared minus 54y plus 41 equals 0. Okay, so what we'll do first is we'll turn this into vertex form. So in this one, a is negative 4 and h is negative b over 2a, which is positive 8 over 2 times negative 4, so that's going to give us negative 1. And then the k, when we plug in negative 1, is going to be negative 4 times negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1. So that's going to be negative 4 times positive 1, and then plus 8, so that'll be 4. So k is 4, h is negative 1, a is negative 4. And then vertex form is a x minus h squared plus k. So this red circle up at the top is going to turn into negative 4, x minus h, which turns into plus 1, squared, and then plus k, which is plus 4. So there's what it turns into. Then I'll take blue, and we'll do the same thing with the y's. So a is 9, h is negative, oh, whoop, negative b over 2a. So that's going to be negative negative 54, so positive 54 over 2 times 9, which is 18. And if you work that out, you get 3. And then k is whatever we get when we plug in 3. And if you work this out, then you end up with negative 81. So then in vertex form, this is going to turn into 9. Uh, instead of x's, it's y's. So y minus 3 squared, and then plus negative 81, so minus 81. So there's what the blue turns into. So then this whole equation right here is going to turn into the new red circle, which is negative 4 x plus 1 squared plus 4, and then plus the new blue circle, so plus 9 y minus 3 squared minus 81, and then plus 41 equals 0. So plus 41 equals 0. So if we keep the parentheses terms on one side, and then get all the units on the other side, we've got, let's see, negative 81 becomes positive 81 over here, then minus 41, so that'll give us 40. And then I got to subtract the 4, so that's going to be 36 over here. All right, and then we want it to equal 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 36. So then this will be x plus 1 squared, ne well, negative, all over 9. And then plus y minus 3 squared over 4 equals 1. And then we want them in big parentheses. So, in fact, in fact, notice the x term is the negative one here. So let's just flip it around so that it's starting to look correct. So y minus 3 squared over 4 minus the x plus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. And then we'll get uh, big parentheses. So y minus 3 and the 4 will turn into a 2 when we put it inside. And the 9 will turn into a 3 when we put it inside. And so now we can analyze this one. So I'll rewrite this. Actually, let me uh, copy this. And we'll put it down here. OK, so this is what we're trying to graph. So we can get the center point. And notice the x's are on the right side. So the center point is negative 1 and then positive 3. Is that the same one we had before? No, different. Yeah, yeah, it's backwards. Okay, center point is negative 1, 3. And the horizontal stretch is the one that goes with the x's, so that's 3. The vertical stretch is what goes with the y's, that's 2. 
horizontal stretch is the bigger one. So that's our A. This is our B. Uh, so let's see. What else do we need? We do have to graph it. Okay. So the center point's at negative 1, positive 3. So there's our center. I'll use a different color. Negative 1, 3. The, to build the box, we use the stretches. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 horizontally, 2 up, and 2 down. So here's our rectangle. And then we'll draw the asymptotes. They go right through the center and the corners. Okay. And then we got to figure out, well, do we have it open up like this, you know, one of these, or do we have it open out like this, right? So in order to figure that out, we just have to see which one's the positive term, the x's or the y's. In this case, the y's, the y term is positive. So when the y terms are positive, that means it opens up and down, right? So we're going to take this point in the center there and have it open up and kind of hug the asymptotes as you go out. And then we'll take this one and it'll hug the asymptotes as we go out this way. And so these, these two big blue points are the vertices. So one vertex, it's two units up because that was how much we stretched by vertically. So that's going to be at negative one five. And then here's the other vertex and that's going to be at negative one one. Uh, and then I think we need the asymptotes, of the, uh, the asymptote equations too. So I'm going to write y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Well, we know that it goes through negative 1, 3, so this will be y minus 3 equals m x minus negative 1, so plus 1. And then we need the slope, and we know that we stretched it out this way by 3 and went up by 2, so the rise is 2 and the run is 3. So then this slope right here is two-thirds. So I can replace the m with two-thirds. And here's the equation of this asymptote. And then down here, we know that it goes through negative 1, 3. So this will be x plus 1. And this will be y minus 3. And then we need the slope. Well, the run is 3. The rise now is down 2. So it's negative 2 over 3. And then there's the equation of the other asymptote. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit.